But uh, I must say, I was shocked when I heard that Kamala was skipping the Al Smith dinner. I'd really hoped that she would come because we can't get enough of hearing her beautiful laugh. She laughs like crazy. What's at stake in this election? Whoa, it's packed with some stuff. <laughs> it's packed with some fundamental stuff. <laughs> I say rather articulately. <laughs> wow, welcome to Discovery Studio World with myself, Lee Apted. It has been a very, very busy week for Kamala Harris on her campaign for the US election and indeed being commander in chief of the White House. Do you think she should be there? Well, let's put it this way. If you look at what's happened the past week, you might think was devastating through uh, throughout Florida when it reached category three, when it hit, uh, there was an incredible amount of flooding, tornadoes, and an unprecedented event that took place. The aftermath though was, uh, was even worse for um, the governor Ron DeSantis and the cleanup crew um, to to deal with. But when uh, Ron DeSantis was in front of the press, he was not happy with uh, some of the comments that came from them. Take a look. That you turned down calls from both Biden and Harris. I are you that. saying you're not aware of that? And if so, how are you not aware of that? Uh, so Biden called me a couple days ago with Helene when I was on the helicopter. Uh, I didn't have any issues. They had helped us with what we've done. I'm not aware that he's tried to call uh, since then. Certainly hasn't called my phone. So I don't know quite where they're getting uh, that information. At the same time, we got the approvals that we need. If there's something else that we need, you know, I'll hop on the phone very quickly, uh, whether that's a FEMA administrator or the president, uh, and we will press the case to be able to get approvals for what we need in Florida. But we have gotten approvals for everything that we've asked for. In this area? I didn't know that she had called, so I, I'm not sure who they called. They didn't call me, um, and their characterization of it um, was something that they did. It wasn't anything that uh, anybody in my, my office did in terms of saying that it was political. Given, given, the, given the severity of this moment, since I, I did want to ask you about, about politics right now in terms of should should. No, I don't really want to answer questions about This is not a time for politics. No, excuse me, Gary. You and your publication will twist anything that's done to try to make a political agenda. That's what you do. That's how you get your clicks. I understand that. I understand that's the business model. Well, but but I don't want to talk about politics because, well, but I have a feeling that however you do, you guys will find a way to frame it. That's just your shtick. I get it. That's fine. Uh, but I don't want to participate in it. Uh, we have had to respond to a Category 4 hurricane. We've had to prepare and now respond to something that may hit uh, as a major hurricane, may be Category 4, may even be bigger than that. We hope that it that it does, uh, but that should be the focus. And I think some of these questions are trying to create uh, some type of political angle where there's just none there. What we've asked for has been approved. You're not seeing me out there carping or complaining about anything. Uh, we have gotten what we need from the feds. Uh, we have been working constructively with all the local communities. We have marshaled an incredible amount of resources in the state of Florida to be able to get the job done. And that's just what we're going to continue to do. That's what we've always done uh, when it comes to these types of situations. And the press kept pressing Ron DeSantis for comment about Kamala Harris and the communication between the two. And he wasn't happy. Check this out. I am working with the President of the United States. I'm working with the Director of FEMA. I'm marshalling all my state assets. We've been doing this now nonstop for over two weeks between Helene and this. And so if there's anything I can leverage to benefit my people, uh, I'm going to do it. The fact of the matter is they put out a story saying I didn't take, I didn't even know she was trying to reach me, but she has no role in this process. And I've been dealing with these storms in Florida under both Trump and Biden. Neither of them ever politicized it. In this week also, the mainstream legacy media has been promoting Kamala Harris as the best thing since sliced bread against Donald Trump getting to the White House and getting to be commander in chief. Yet, as a public speaker, as I've already stated, she is even worse than I am 
at public speaking without a teleprompter. Yeah, check this out. As you know, we're sitting here in a state and arguably in front of an audience that 54 days from now could decide the outcome of this presidential election. Yeah. You hear it more than I do. People want to know more about you and about your specific plans. At the debate the other night, you talked about creating an opportunity economy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can drill down on that a little bit. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, yeah. what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain this to some people who may not have had the same experience. You know, if, if it, a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn. Kamala Bot needs a tune-up. The VP finally getting herself out there with more interviews and chit-chat with journalists. But her style so far has been robotic. Whenever asked to give policy specifics, Harris reverts to her pre-programmed, over-rehearsed talking points. Check out this rinse, blather, repeat. I was raised as a middle-class kid. I grew up a middle-class kid. I grew up a middle-class kid. I intend to create an opportunity economy. Creating an opportunity economy. Building an opportunity economy. What I call an opportunity economy. I started my career as a prosecutor. I was a career prosecutor for most of my career. My career. Having a background as a prosecutor. <laughs> the programmer is still trying to work out the bugs in Kamala Bot. She's only got two settings, word salad and pander politics. VP Harris testing out her latest accent while speaking to the Congressional Hispanic Caucus in Washington. Listen. Um, I love you back. I grew up understanding the children of the community are the children of the community. Recently, I was in Nevada. I'm, I'm in these streets, let me tell you, I'm everywhere. <laughs> we have some work to do. In fact, a lot of hard work ahead of us. But we like hard work. Hard work is good work. Hard work is joyful work, I say. Of course, then during the week, Barack Obama, he was, well, he just wasn't happy, was he, with the fact that uh, the brothers weren't voting or getting out and voting for Kamala. As he put it, he doesn't think that the brothers are happy about maybe a woman being president. Well, what do you think? Kamala Harris has a man problem. White dudes for Harris isn't working, and the hombres don't trust her. Right now, leaning towards Trump, but I haven't made a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned about the way I feel President Biden was pushed aside. Oh. <laughs> and as Obama said, Harris also has a problem with the brothers. Well, now Joe Biden's out and Kamala's in. What do you think of her? Garbage. She's for herself. I don't know what she did when she was the vice president. I don't know what she's going to do now. She's part of the problem of the country. A lot of people vote because she's black. You don't vote for nobody because of their color, you know. You vote for what good they can do. You know, she could be she could be the devil in disguise. Donors are admitting men are gone. But Democrats say Kamala Harris isn't the issue. Men are. And they should see a psychiatrist. I think men are in crisis, actually, in this country. Uh, I think that plays out different ways. And not all men uh, are in crisis, of course. And not all men are just at home listening to Joe Rogan, being mm -hmm. angry or being recruited to fascism. Some just need therapy, like we all do. We need to have a real conversation about that rather than allowing this kind of drift toward this faux masculinity that we see Donald Trump evincing. So do you really think Kamala is losing because men are in crisis? No. You know, it's interesting to note during the week, uh, even after his brother's comment saying, impressing, going on rallies for Kamala Harris and promoting her and promoting her, that um, a lip reader specialist noted that when Obama was discussing, but discussing Kamala Harris with Biden, it's on camera. It was noted 
he was saying, she's not as strong as me. That campaign starts to struggle and it got worse. Senator Vance, in Pittsburgh on Thursday, uh, former President Barack Obama admonished black men for not, <laughs> for not, for, for being hesitant about voting for Kamala Harris. I was wondering if you could contrast your approach to hesitant voters and how you tried to earn them over. You know, first of all, I don't believe whether you agree or, with me or disagree with me, whether you agree with Donald Trump or disagree with him, I don't believe in hectoring voters. I believe in persuading voters. Your, your support is not something I'm given or something I'm owed. It's something you got to go out there and work for. So one, I just don't like the tone of going in. I mean, look, has, the, the better question for Barack Obama or anybody to ask is not why black men, it's not, it's not how dare you not vote for Kamala Harris, it's maybe they're thinking about voting for Donald Trump because they're sick of being censored, they're sick of being told what to do, and they're sick of not being able to afford the American dream. Maybe that's why we're getting a lot more black voters than Republicans in the past. But, you know, the, the, the last point I want to make is, you know, what, I, I got to say, and Shocker, newsflash here, I've defended Kamala Harris once, I'm about to defend Barack Obama once. <laughs> when I, okay, so, so set to the side the hectoring and the tone of, of, of Obama when he went in and talking about black voters, like whatever, obviously I just criticized that. You know what I was watching him talk, you know what I thought to myself is, agree or disagree, and obviously I disagreed with about 99% of what he did when he was in office, he had substance and Kamala Harris does not. Like he, he actually had thoughts in his head and what a contrast that is to Kamala Harris who just repeats slogan after slogan after slogan. I am, I, I gotta be honest with you, I am offended. Not as a person running to be your vice president, but as a fellow citizen, I am offended that a person who is so substanceless as Kamala Harris dares to think that she could be the president of the United States. It is a disgrace. So the Hollywood stars are out in force again, and that pretty woman herself, Julia Roberts, is still promoting the joy and still promoting Kamala Harris. Take a look. I just hope that all the women here tonight talk to all the men that aren't here tonight, and all you brave men that are here tonight. <laughs> Talk to all the other men that aren't here tonight. And let's just get it going. Enough with the fighting. Let's get to the uniting. Let's get to the joy. Has the joy gone out of Kamala's campaign? As the week progressed, there were some cracks. Check this out. Kamala has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from the dungeons of the third world. She has had them resettled beautifully into your community to prey upon innocent American citizens. That's what they're doing. And no place is it more evident than right here. Because in Aurora, multiple apartment complexes have been taken over by the savage Venezuela prison gang known as Tren de Aragua. Well, that was former President Trump speaking at a rally in Aurora, Colorado on Friday. Now, ABC News host Martha Raddatz decided to press vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance over Trump's comments. And Vance then went viral for his response. Watch. President Trump was actually in Aurora, Colorado, talking to people on the ground. And what we're hearing, of course, Martha, is that people are terrified by what has happened with some of these Venezuelan gangs. Sen Senator and Vance, I, I I'm going to stop you because I know exactly what happened. Martha. I'm going to stop you. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment complex, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns. A handful of problems. 
Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs, and Donald Trump is the problem, and not Kamala Harris's open border. Americans are so fed up with what's going on, and they have every right to be. And I, I really find this exchange, Martha, sort of interesting because you seem to be more focused with nitpicking everything that Donald Trump has said, rather than acknowledging that apartment complexes in the United States of America America are being taken over by violent gangs. Okay, let's let's just uh, let's just end that with they did not invade or take over the city, as Donald Trump said. Uh, I, I want to move on to just a few women. apartment complexes. No big deal. Vice President Kamala Harris pressed on her past support of taxpayer-funded sex changes for inmates and illegal immigrants in her interview with Brett Baer. Here's the soundbite. Are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law, and it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available. To the Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard joins us with reaction. Good morning to you. Good morning. What is your reaction when you hear that soundbite? Uh, it's one of the many examples of how Kamala Harris is lying to the American people and assuming that we're so stupid as just to believe her lies. Uh, we've seen the sound bites and the clips of her when she was advocating and patting herself on the back for the law changes that she brought about that would do this very thing, that would make sure that U.S. taxpayers are covering transgender surgeries for inmates. She advocated for the same for illegal immigrants coming across our border. She refuses to take responsibility and own up to her positions. If her views have changed, fine, people can change, but she has, she, the, the American people deserve the respect enough to know exactly why she has changed. In that interview with Brett, there are a number of examples where she is lying about her past positions in order to try to create this new version of herself that she thinks will be more palatable to voters. And it's, it's, it's offensive in my view. Covering the Kamala campaign's been disorienting. First, she was the most unpopular VP in history. Then she's Mrs. Messiah. Her record's radical left. Then she agrees with Trump, but her values haven't changed, okay? Her VP's wooing white dudes and Obama's scolding the brothers. She hid from CNN for five weeks. Then she turned down the Fox debate. Now she's playing footsie with Rogan and begging to come on Fox. Well, be careful what you wish for because Kamala Harris just sat down with Brett Baer for a half hour and she was roughed up so badly Pelosi's asking Joe to get back in. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm gonna talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a number. Is, do you but, think but, it's but, one million, three million? Brett, let's just get to the point, okay? The point is, that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, of apprehensions... I'm not finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have an immigration system... It's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration. The first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It and, was essentially so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, may I finish? May I finish responding, please? But, here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising, okay. and I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. <laughs> this was the first time the vice president and the Democrat nominee had ever had to answer for herself. She spent more time defending herself with Brett than she has defending the actual border. Then it got personal. 
Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying I, to you, no, do you no, no, owe Brett, those families I think really, I think an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a border security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Brett Baer is giving Kamala an opportunity to say if she were president, Lake and Riley would have been alive. Kamala should have said that's something I would have done differently than Biden. I would have secured the border much earlier, but I was just the VP serving at the pleasure of the president. And if you vote for me, I promise I'll protect women like Lake and Riley. At this stage of the campaign, saying, I'm sorry about the dead woman on my watch. It's all Trump's fault. It's not gonna fly. Harris has never been pressed this hard on her border policies. And it continued. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss, sincerely. But let's talk about what is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's talk about that as well. But do you Brett, want to in, answer in her? all fairness, I told you, I feel awful for what she and her family have experienced. During that time, you said repeatedly that the border was secure. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? I think it, we've had a broken immigration system transcending, by the way, Donald Trump's administration even before. Let's, let's all be honest about that. I have no pride and saying that this is a perfect immigration system, I've been clear, I think we all are, that it needs to be fixed. Kamala just said the border has always been broken, but it was secure for three years when Lake and Riley was murdered. That doesn't make any sense. How did Trump break the border that you said was secure? You can't follow Kamala's logic because there is none. She doesn't know anything about the border. She doesn't care about the border. She just doesn't want anyone talking about it. Her whole interview was a continuation of a cover-up. Watch. Madam Vice President, but you call let's not Donald Trump. The significance you, you, you of that. You call Donald Trump. Um, he's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable, but uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden. I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump but is. But you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is. After George Clooney said and within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought this Brett, was not the same Brett, Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump. So Kamala Harris didn't want to talk about Kamala Harris, and she definitely didn't want to talk about Joe Biden.
She never once touted the accomplishments of the Biden administration. Not a single one. She just wants to prosecute Donald Trump. But America doesn't want a prosecutor. We want a president. At one point, she just snapped. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. Why didn't we see anger like that about the border, about prices, about crime? Never kind of showed that flash of anger when it was affecting millions of Americans. She wasn't likable. She wasn't charming. She was never funny. She wasn't warm. There was nothing gracious, eloquent, or reassuring about this performance. Then Brett asked her the question that she's had a week, actually the whole campaign to think about. Watch this. So you're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. Okay, she spent eight years in Washington, D.C. That's twice as long as Trump. And what would you do differently? She said she'd bring fresh new ideas. Then she never said what the ideas were. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward, and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years, so what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70 percent of people That is tell about pollsters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and President. I both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people have become. Power. But listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, the, the, the former chief of staff to the president, Donald Trump, uh, former defense secretaries, national security advisor, and his vice president. One, that he is unfit to serve, that he is unstable, that he is dangerous. So turning the page isn't turning the page from Biden. She's going to do everything the same. She's just turning the page from Trump, who wasn't in office. Her slogans don't even make sense because 79% of the country wants to turn the page from her. This is what an actual Kamala Harris interview should look like. Brett gave her the same treatment as he gave Trump in the spring. Respectful, firm, and persistent. We didn't swap her answers to make her look better like CBS. We didn't invite little Timmy along to hold her hand like CNN. This was a big girl interview. And as we approach the end of the week, well, like I said, it got worse. She didn't even attend the Al Smith dinner, which is a long-standing tradition where the lead Republican and Democrat stand in front and make, basically make jokes at each other's expense. She didn't attend, but just sent a video message. So, Donald J. Trump took the limelight. Here's some highlights. It's a true pleasure to be with you this evening. Amazing pleasure. And uh, these days, it's uh, really a pleasure anywhere in New York without a subpoena for my appearance. <laughs> Anytime I don't get a subpoena, I'm very happy. They've gone after me, Mr. Mayor. 
You're peanuts compared to what they've done to me. <laughs> and you're going to be okay. But I have to be careful, however, to understand that this will be the first time in the history of this event where jokes will be fact-checked, and they will be. And they will be. It's been a long tradition for both Democrat and Republican candidates for President of the United States to attend this dinner. And always, it's a rule. You got to go to the dinner. You got to do it. Otherwise, uh, bad things are going to happen to you from up there. I was... <laughs> you can't do what I just saw on that screen. But uh, my opponent feels like she does not have to be here, which is deeply disrespectful to the event, and in particular to our great Catholic community. Very disrespectful. The last Democrat not to attend this important event was Walter Mondale, and it did not go very well for him. He lost 49 states, and he won one, Minnesota. So I said, there's no way I'm missing it. Actually, it was not easy for me to get here tonight. Cardinal, I wasn't going to miss this thing. You know, matter, I didn't care. I wasn't going to miss it. But that's true. Walter Mondale, 49 and 1. He was expected to do well, and it didn't work out. <laughs> it shows you there is a God. I mean, for those people that are questioning it. I understand the real reason that she's not here is she's hunting with her running mate, spending a lot of time hunting. In any event, it's a weird, 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 weird. You know the word weird. They called me weird. They called JD weird. We're very solid people. This guy is calling us weird, but this was weird that the Democrat candidate is not here and with us tonight. I want to also congratulate somebody's going to make us all healthy. RFK Jr., we love you. I don't see him. He's campaigning all over the place. He's campaigning. He was, you're all over. How, hello, you both. Nice to see you both. You're doing a good job. He's a great guy, too. He really is. He's going to make us a healthier place. We're going to let him go wild for a little while. Then I'm going to have to maybe rein him back. Because <laughs> he's got some pretty wild ideas, but most of them are really good, I think. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good man. And he believes, he believes the environment, the healthy people. He wants healthy people. He wants healthy food. And he's going to do it. He's going to have a big chance to do it, because we do need that. I would not have missed the Al Smith dinner for anything in the world. I still remember coming here as a very young guy with my father, Fred. He was a great guy, my father. He was a, he was a tough cookie, but he had a very big heart. He was — anytime we'd walk down the street, and you don't see it too much anymore, there'd be people standing with tin cans, tin cans, and he would always take out $100 and put it in that can. And I always thought it was beautiful. And frankly, I even think more so now it was beautiful, because nowadays you don't see it so much. But he, I miss him, and we used to come here very religiously. And uh, a great New York tradition has been born 79 years ago. It was born 79 years ago. And there are some people that were here for almost that length. I know many of them, and it's not a pretty picture. <laughs> not a pretty picture. The two candidates for president are supposed to exchange good-natured barbs. And you know, we get along very well. I didn't like Biden very much, and now I like him quite a bit. You know, it's... <laughs> and now I say that She's much worse than him. He was a much better candidate than her, actually. And when we hopefully win, dispose of her, I like her a lot. But right now, I can't stand her. It's true. I can't stand her. I've never liked people that I was competing against. When you do, uh, a lot of bad things happen. And we are doing well, by the way. The votes are starting to come in. You got to get out and vote. And Catholics, you got to vote for me. Just remember. You better remember I'm here. And she's not. I could have done that, too. But you do something that's incredible, that Catholic Church, you're helping the poor, educating children, and supporting the vulnerable. But if you really wanted Vice President Harris to accept your invitation, I guess you should have told her the funds were going to bail out the looters and rioters in Minneapolis, and she would have been here guaranteed. She would have been here. Guaranteed.
She would have been okay. She would have been okay with that. But I know this isn't my normal crowd tonight because it just isn't. It's not my normal crowd. Believe me, my normal crowd is younger, <laughs> has a lot more energy. <laughs> but you have certain advantages, too, <laughs> like cash, lots of cash. <laughs> but many of you are Manhattan liberals from the media and the Democrat Party. I always say the Democrat, you know, Chuck doesn't like that. He likes Democratic. And it sounds much more beautiful, the Democratic Party. I always say the Democrat Party because it sounds worse. <laughs> it is true. He likes Democratic. Why don't they just change the name? This way, we're, you know, they, it is Democrat. But uh, I must say, I was shocked when I heard that Kamala was skipping the Al Smith dinner. I'd really hoped that she would come because we can't get enough of hearing her beautiful laugh. She laughs like crazy. <laughs> we would recognize it any place in this room, and all polls are indicating I'm leading big with the Catholic vote, as I should be, as I should be. But I don't think Kamala has given up yet. She hasn't, instead of attending tonight, she's in Michigan receiving communion from Gretchen Whitmer. <laughs> That's not a pretty sight. <laughs> but Catholics, please don't be too insulted by Kamala's absence. If the Democrats <laughs> yeah, he says, thank you very much, I appreciate that. <laughs> if Democrats really wanted to have someone not be with us this evening, they would have just sent Joe Biden. <laughs> you know, he's having second thoughts, you know that, right? He's having he wants to come back. If she does any worse in the polls, they're going to bring him back again, I think. Chuck, he's going to do it. He's the one that got him out. That's the guy. Much more so than Crazy Nancy, I will tell you. Because I know him. He did it. <laughs> Joe has almost disappeared from view. The only way he could be seen less is if he had a show on CNN. They have nothing. <laughs> They've got nothing. Fake news, right? Fake. That term wasn't good. You know, they say the term is no longer in vogue because it's much worse than fake. I don't want to tell you what the real name is. I won't do it because all those cameras would shut off immediately. They don't like that. But apparently, Joe didn't think it was fair for me to have the podium to myself with Kamala skipping the event. So he called, looked at me, and said, don't. Does anybody understand that? Yeah. That's, that was. I thought it was actually very good until just now. <laughs> it was announced this morning that at a funeral yesterday, in a rare moment of clarity, Joe told Barack Hussein Obama that, quote, <laughs> only a few people got that. Or as Rush Limbaugh used to say, Barack Hussein Obama. Remember, Barack? He was a piece of work. We miss him. But as he told Barack Hussein Obama, quote, she's not as strong as me. She's not as strong. Do you understand that? And Obama agreed, saying, that's true. Other than that, I think the Democrats are getting along quite well. Right? They get, nobody got that one. The fact is, we need new leadership in this country. Right now, we have someone in the White House who can barely talk, barely put together two coherent sentences who seems to have mental faculties of a child, it's sad, is a person that has nothing going, no intelligence whatsoever, but enough about Kamala Harris. Let's get on to something. I know Kamala's word because she spends a lot of time complaining. I won't agree to another debate. But the truth is, I've debated twice this year, once against Joe Biden and once against David Muir of ABC. <laughs> that was amazing, 11 times. None for the other side. Do you think that's fair news? I don't think so. That's fake news. I don't know what's going to happen three weeks from now. It's going to be uh, very interesting. It just started. It's actually, uh, it's actually, isn't it sort of exciting? Right? It really, isn't it just exciting what's going on? As uh, well as SpaceX and that recent capture, which I have got on my YouTube that, right? site. You've got to check that out. It is amazing to see. What it is launch. just almost impossible to just to see that it actually happened. 
but you've got to check out that booster catch. Uh, but as well as that, Elon has been saying that really you've got to make sure you register. If you're listening, to, watching this and listening to me right now and you're over in the US, you've got to register your vote by Monday evening at the East, Eastern Standard Time, obviously, uh, to vote. Now, after that, it won't count. Just, it's just a repeat. It's worth repeating that you've got to register your vote by Monday evening at the latest, because after that, it just won't count. So, as was uh, Donald J. Trump in Pennsylvania on uh, an incredible rally, uh, so was Elon. And uh, it was just really, really fascinating to watch him and to hear what he had to say about why uh, the US voters should be um, voting for uh, Donald J. Trump, uh, especially in Pennsylvania, as it's one of the swing states, and the most prominent swing state, which could tip the balance as to who is going to be leading uh, or being commander in chief in a couple of weeks time. So, and there was one part of his uh, speech, uh, which really uh, is well, kind of galvanized why I uh, really hate the mainstream media, especially when it comes to freedom of speech and especially when it comes to myself doing uh, like content, which could be classed as controversial, but it's like um, obviously with my JFK assassination stuff, my 9 11 stuff freedom of speech um, on YouTube is is very restricted. Why? Because it's owned by Google. And even um, if you're going to say that if Donald J. Trump gets in uh, in a couple of weeks time, who knows what will happen with regards to freedom of speech? He's certainly all for it. He knows that he's got a great supporter with uh, Elon Musk as well. So his comments um, it, um, at um, in Pennsylvania just um, just the other night uh, when Elon himself spoke about how the uh, mainstream legacy media, as they're called now, um, are and how and how they are the censorship is just uh, rampant. It's rife. And it really, really needs um, sorting out. You know for a fact Elon um, believes in freedom of speech. And that scares a lot of people, including the owners of YouTube, which are Google. So I think that it's going to be a fascinating couple of weeks on the lead up to this, um, to this uh, US presidential election. And um, if you just check out Elon here now and uh, see what he had to say, um, here's some small excerpts of his fascinating speech. And um, it was really, really good. Check it out. Um. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Um, what should I say? SpaceX does rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, actually, I'm I, I'm pretty excited about the possibility of you know, uh, SpaceX, uh, you know, and and just generally becoming a spacefaring civilization, uh, going beyond where we went in the past with the uh, where we went to the moon. It's it's crazy that we went to the moon uh, over 50 years ago was the last time. Uh, any, anyone went to, to the moon, and uh, a lot of people think we, we didn't go to the moon, but we did. We did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Soviets would have called us out on that one if uh, we hadn't gone to the moon. They would be like, they would have called, they would have called bullshit on that one, a hundred percent. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to go back. To, we need, we should not just go back to the moon. We, we should have a moon base. You know. Like moon base alpha, you know, like an actual base with like a science station. That'd be sick. 
you know, and, uh, and, and like, and, and I, I, th I think we want to become a multi-planet species and be out there among the stars. We want to make Starfleet real, you know? So that like, I mean, like, 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 you should be able to go to Mars if you want to go to, I mean, go to Mars. It'd be like, amazing, you know? Well, it'll take, it'll take six months. <laughs> so, Mars is far. Um, but we can do it. We can create a base on Mars that, and, and ultimately build a city on Mars and make life multiplanetary. I think that would be super cool. Um, yeah, I mean. I mean, the, you know, life can't just be about like, you know, solving one miserable problem after another. There have to be things that inspire you, that excite you about the future, that you look forward to, you're like, wow, that's gonna be cool. And I think being a space-bearing civilization and, and you know, having a city on Mars and going out there exploring the, the moons of Jupiter, ultimately getting to other star systems would be incredibly exciting. And something you're like, wow, look, you really look forward to that. That'd be like, I don't know, incredible. So, you know, go out there and find like maybe alien civilizations, um, you know, like in Star Trek, you know, go, go where you've never gone before. Um, so yeah, let's make Starfleet real. Um, yeah. You know, meanwhile, back here on Earth, um, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we, we, we need to, um, I think we need, we, we definitely need to get uh, President Trump re-elected. That is, <laughs> that is, so, uh, that, that is, that is, I think, uh, in, in, incredibly important, um, and, um, I mean, I think we, we, we don't, I think America is great, but we want to be, we want to be greater. Um, and we want to do, we want to do, we want to do amazing things. Um, and we, we don't want, uh, you know, like the Apollo program to be our high water mark. We, we want to, you know, do great things in America. And, and I think we also want to uh, preserve what has made America great. Um, you know, so, you know, th things like uh, freedom of speech, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, like, you know, the, the rights to bear arms, these things in the Constitution that are actually, you know, imp important. Uh, you have to say, why did, they, why, did they, why did they add these amendments to the Constitution? It was because in, in the places that people ca uh, came from, uh, if you said what you want to say, you'd be uh, put in prison or you'd, or you'd be killed. Um, and, and, uh, and, and they took everyone's guns away so that, you know, they couldn't rebel against oppressive government. That's the whole, that's the whole idea behind taking the guns away. So. Um, so I'm, I'm a big believer in the Constitution, um, big believer in, um, you know, uh, what makes America great. Um, and, and then we, we also need, like, some obvious things, like we, we need actual secure borders, um, you know. It's like, you, you know, you, you're, like you're, you're not a country if you don't have, like, a border. Like, it's just, like, what does it even mean to be a country at that point, you know? Um, and, I, and I went to the border just to see for myself what it was like. And it was like, it's like World War Z at the border. You know, like, this is crazy, man. Um, so obviously I'm, you know, in favor of, 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 of immigrants that... So, you know, the, the, the insane government spending is, is driving the country into bankruptcy. Um, and, uh, you know, just like a person, if you spend too much, you know, eventually you go bankrupt. The, the, the federal debt's growing by a trillion dollars every three months. Um, I mean... It's, I mean, our, our defense budget is pretty gigantic. It's a trillion dollars. But our, the, the interest that, that we owe on the debt is now higher than the defense budget. Over a trillion dollars and growing. This is not sustainable. So we, we have to do something about that or the country's gonna go bankrupt. So that, that's an essential thing too. The, it, yeah, so that's why we need the Department of Government Efficiency. D-O-G-E, that's uh, on, an, on, a, on a brass plaque on a desk. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. So, you know, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. As, uh, as people were saying, it's just like it's, like, it's common sense stuff. And, 
you know, um, you know, it, it, it was, it, America really just needs it needs to remain the land of of, of opportunity, the land where, where you know your your success is a function of of, of how hard you work and and you, like your talent. Like if you're talented and hardworking, that should be the only thing that determines whether you are successful. <laughs> That's it. You know. And America is also supposed to be the land of freedom. That means personal freedom. Like the government should not be imposing all, all these rules on 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 the, on, on people. And, and uh, you know, it's it's like, it, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, gov government overreach is 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 not not cool. Um, freedom, freedom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twitter files. I mean, it was just nutty. You know. Uh, People don't realize just how much uh, uh, you know, government involvement there is in, in the media and like how much the government influences the media. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy how you know you'll see like when, when that, like in fact I, I I think like whoever's manipulating the media should mix it up a bit because they're really not doing a great job. <laughs> um, like you know when when they was a week before the debate uh, with between Biden and Trump and uh, like the, everyone was on the media was saying Biden was sharp as attack 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 I mean, like like you should mix it up a little get a thesaurus um, okay <laughs> the, the NBC media puppets were, were just all saying exactly the same thing so um, you know it's just it's just kind of strange that, and like, do they all just get the same memo at the same time? I don't know, where does it come in? Is on the, I wanna see the group text, okay? <laughs> like, where, where, is there like an email copy list or what? You know, everyone say the, the same thing at the same time. Um, yeah, just total puppets. You know, so overall, it's been a pretty poor week for Kamala. Donald J. Trump has gone ahead in the polls and it really uh, seems that, you know, everything that they're trying to throw at Donald J. Trump to try to get voters going the other way is not really working. It's been a, definitely a lot better week for uh, Donald Trump. And um, to lead uh, the US as commander in chief uh, into uh, the next four years as president of the USA? Well, can he be the man to make America great again? It's entirely up to you guys. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you like this kind of content, see that where that red arrow's going, give it a good old click, and I promise you, that content, you won't be disappointed. I'll check you for the next one.